The stakes are too high. We must do math. Gambling is too risky. Let's talk about this term that really made me rethink my weekly planning. My goal is to help, to help restaurant owners finally get to where they want to go. But more than that, my goal is to find entrepreneurs within that segment that actually know what it means to hustle. That's my goal. Come on the journey with me. Restaurant Marketing Secrets, episode 299. I'm your host, Matt Plapp, and we're brought to you by America's Best Restaurants. America's Best Restaurants is on a path to help you, independent restaurant owners, find more frequent customers because infrequent customers don't pay the damn bills. And not having a plan to find those customers is gambling. Today, we're going to talk about doing math. A few weeks ago, I'm watching a YouTube channel, a guy named Peter that tours the world. And this two-part series, he was touring Las Vegas. He was on the CD side, then he was on the business side. And he's talking to this gentleman as they look out over the strip. And he asked him a question about the casinos and how they operate. And he was talking about the casinos off the strip and how the odds are a little different than the ones on the strip and how the locals go there and they don't go to the strip. And the gentleman said a line that I wrote down and that I talked about for a month. And then it finally hit me that I wasn't living the line. The line was casinos don't gamble. They do math. That there is zero chance the casino is not going to win. And that got me thinking about my business. It got me thinking about my employees within the business. It got me thinking about our clients that do we actually know the math and are we looking ahead? Because I wasn't, I thought I knew the math. And then this past week as I'm running a 21 K the first five miles of it, every step I thought over and over, what can I do to be proactive versus reactive? What are my levers I can pull to control my math equation? You've got to understand what it takes to get to the next level. So here's what happened with us. About a year ago, I got what I thought was really granular. And it's pretty cool to see me grow as a CEO, honestly looking at myself from a number standpoint. Because if you know me, you know that I'm not a traditional accounting type person. But I do like making decisions based on fact versus guessing. And so last summer, I started to analyze numbers. And it's kind of comical because every month, I get deeper and deeper and deeper down the rabbit hole of these numbers. And they become more important. And they become more impactful, really, honestly. The levers you learn how to pull that dictate different revenue streams for your business and help you, one, conserve cash flow, and two, create more profit, are unbelievable. And so with me, every month the past year or so, I have dug deeper. I have analyzed all of our inflow. Where is traffic coming from for our business? And this is no different than your restaurant. You have your income streams. You have your third party. You have dine-in. You have carry-out. You have delivery. You have the different third parties. You have your own websites ordering. You have people in the restaurant that are maybe at the bar that are at a table. You have some people that are ordering mixed drinks or beer, desserts, appetizers, you are no different than my business. It just comes down to scientifically understanding what is the math equation that allows you to win. For me, I had six factors I recently discovered. Two of those factors I can't really control, but four of them I can And it was really impactful for me as I was analyzing this phrase. Casinos don't gamble, they do math. And what's crazy about it is the past month or so, I've been repeating it to people on my team. For inside their departments, casinos don't do math. No, casinos don't gamble, they do math. I've said it over and over. I've put it in workplace posts, which is an internal 
board that we use to communicate. I put it in emails and text messages. I've put it inside of chats and our, our systems. And I believe that when you verbalize things, you start to internalize things. Because for me, I knew that I was doing math, but I wasn't doing the right math. And so last week, Doug Smith, one of my COOs, we sat down and we did some math and we found these six problems that were causing issues in our business. We interrupt this programming for a brief announcement from our sponsor. Hey, it's Matt. Okay, there's no sponsor here. Just us. We don't have advertising in our podcast. It's just us dropping value to help you build the ultimate marketing plan for your restaurant. But I want you to take advantage of something. We have our America's Best Restaurants University. Yes, it's not actually a university. It's an online training. But it is a great place for you to learn how to market your restaurant at a high level and join our community online and in our Facebook group. Go to abru.online slash free. abru.online slash free. Join the ABR University and let us help you get to the next level. Now back to the show. So what was really cool about this conversation that I had with Doug and my team is that when we analyzed our data from the past 12 weeks of one of our income streams in the company, right away we knew the problem. At least we thought we did. We literally, well, I'll blame Doug on this one. He highlighted three cells. But we both had the same thought that, wow, there it is. And it was easy. It was like, oh, my gosh, we figured it out right away. I said, well, hold on. Let's slow our roll. Let's break this down deeper. So what we did was I took 12 weeks of our prior sales in this division of our company. And I broke down the different components that I could see causing issues with it. So for you, for example, you look back at your last 12 weeks and you look at your revenue streams. Your third party, your pickup, your delivery, your dine-in, you know, your alcohol, your food. There's, you've got probably 20 different things if I had to imagine. It's not my business. So I don't know how many y'all got. I've seen some restaurants that have way more than I think they should. And I've seen some that have it dialed in. But you've got those streams. And so for me, I have this one particular stream. But that stream of income has six what I'll call levers. Now, two of those six levers that we identify were issues were not levers we could really control outside of just training on our end. We couldn't do anything to change the way that happened. But what we could do was come up with metrics that made those variables obsolete. That if I had more of this, it didn't matter what that variable did because my outcome was still there. But what was really cool was when we looked at all these variables, we pulled, looked at these six items we identified four, and we could see over the prior 12 weeks where none of them were hitting on all cylinders. In fact, we didn't have a week over four of these things hitting at one time. We never had one week where any more than two were at full capacity, full strength, I guess you could say. And that was encouraging because we had weeks where we won really big. And to see that we weren't firing all, all cylinders was kind of encouraging. But what was discouraging was we were having a conversation based on being reactive. When you do math, gambling is being reactive. Is when you're looking back after these 12 weeks and going, oh shit, what did I do? And so last weekend as I'm running this 21K, which I actually only finished 15K, different story. It came to my mind that I needed to create a dashboard to allow me to understand the factors in the future that would hurt those levers. And so we've created it. I'm working on it again tonight, again tomorrow morning. I believe by the end of this week, I'll have something that looks back, looks at today, looks back seven days, looks forward seven days, that looks back 14, looks forward 14, looks back 30, looks forward 30, so that I can look at the possible speed bumps we're going to have that we can make sure we don't fall on our face with. And with you as a restaurant, that could be holidays. July 4th is a Tuesday this year. There's certain times of the month in the, in the business, like with you, that the first falls on a, a Wednesday or a Friday or a Sunday. That's going to be different sales because of people getting paid or not getting paid or having more bills to pay. You've got to understand what are those factors that help or hurt your sales and then looking ahead, how can you plan it? I think back 
to when July 4th fell on a Wednesday with our boat dealership many, many years ago. It was probably around 2006, 2007. And when that July 4th fell on a Wednesday, we had less boat sales to the tune of about a half million dollars right away because people weren't off work. They were at work. They were at home. They weren't off Monday, Tuesday, or Thursday, Friday. So they didn't need to go buy that new boat or a first-time boat for July 4th weekend. Crazy to say out loud, but people did it to the tune of a lot at our place and probably everywhere else. We figured that out late, and we fixed it by doing some massive activity. You have those same things happening. What is going to happen over the next 12 weeks that is going to impact your sales that you can control and what can't you control? You have to learn to do math. As I've learned on my end, the more I say it out loud, the deeper I get into it. And for me, being reactive is not the answer. Being proactive is and understanding that there are things that are going to happen the next one to 12 weeks that I can put little things in place and put more activity on certain weeks than others to make sure that we are not looking at a bad week. So as you know, I don't charge for my content. We don't have sponsors. We don't have product placement in here. But what I want your help with is spreading the word. If you're finding value here, do me a favor. Share this on your social media. Share an episode with something that made sense to you, that's relevant to your restaurant, that you got value from, and tag Matt Plapp and America's Best Restaurants. Also, go to America's Best Restaurants on Facebook and on Google and leave us a review. Let us know the impact we've had on your restaurant with our roadshow, with our marketing help, or with our podcast. And last but not least, if you want to take the next step and help me out a lot and help us out a lot, text me a testimonial, 859-743-2408. That's my cell. A selfie video would be awesome about the impact this content or our company is having on your independent restaurant. But worst case scenario, just a few kind words. The way we can help lift this industry up is to help get content like this to more independent restaurant owners, and you are the key to spreading the word. I appreciate your support. Have an amazing day.